Lifelong friends Joyce Partenheimer and Sherry McRae were on a scrapbooking retreat, celebrating Joyce's recent victory over breast cancer and Sherry's recovery from knee replacement surgery. But it hadn't been the celebration they hoped for. All week, Joyce struggled with stomach pain. Then that Friday. Joyce woke me up at about 3 o'clock in the morning. She was in agony. I mean, she was just crying out in pain, writhing in pain. Sherry rushed her to the ER at Grand Strand Medical Center, 10 minutes away. I was praying aloud the whole ride and just asking Jesus to help us. Joyce was taken in for a CT scan, given pain meds, and kept in the ER for observation. When 6 o'clock in the morning came and we still were not any further in terms of getting her relief, I called her husband, Kim. She said, um, Kim, Joyce is not doing well. She's got intense stomach pain, and I think you really need to come up here quick. So I packed the bag for the weekend, not knowing what was wrong. Kim arrived later that morning, and Joyce was admitted that afternoon. By then, trauma surgeon Dr. Jason Farah had been assigned to her case. After taking one look at her scans, he rushed Joyce in for emergency surgery. She ended up having a perforated gastric ulcer and spilling, you know, intestinal contents into her abdomen, having sepsis. I didn't know if it was too late, honestly. Making things worse, Joyce's body was still recovering from a double mastectomy just two months earlier. I remember just continually praying, God, please don't take her, please don't take her. After three hours in surgery, Dr. Farrah came up the hall and he looked like he'd lost his best friend. He said, I have never seen the extent of the damage as I have tonight. He said it goes from her sternum down to below her belly button. You can't survive without your small intestine, for instance. In this case, we were talking about the entire length of the intestine. She was wildly unstable in the operating room. She could only tolerate so much, so she needed all the infection washed out, the hole sealed, and an assessment of what was in the abdomen and no more. This was a really tough spot she was in. She was fighting for her life. He said, I think you need to call the family in. I'm not sure if she's gonna make it. Dr. Ferris and Joyce to the ICU on antibiotics and a wound vac and scheduled another surgery Sunday to remove the dead bowel. Meanwhile, Joyce's family continued to gather as her two sons and daughters worked to get everyone they knew praying. I said, Lord, if you're gonna take, if you're gonna, if you're gonna take Joyce home, please let me say goodbye. Sunday, getting ready for the second surgery, Dr. Farah wasn't optimistic. I thought we were gonna see an unsurvivable situation. I really did. I worried that there would be some recovery of the bowel, but I thought it would be to a point that would not sustain her life moving forward. The family asked him for a best case scenario. He said it would be, her insides would look beautiful. And that's specifically what the boys prayed, that when he went back in Sunday afternoon, he would find her intestines would look beautiful. When Dr. Farah went back in. Was it a home run? Was it a home run? Was it a home run? There was no dead bowel that we had to remove. It's almost a complete reversal of the physiologic process that was going on there, and I was pretty ecstatic about that. He said, I, I didn't do this. I couldn't have done this. There's no way I could do anything like this. God touched your wife and healed her. It's a fact that they prayed for a specific outcome and when I came out and gave them the report, it was literally and specifically what they had prayed for. But Joyce's fight wasn't over. Chemo and the ulcer had left her body even weaker. Twice, she coded when doctors tried to take her off the vent. That was a big, big problem for her. It was a very difficult road because she's so far behind the eight ball physiologically. For the next eight days, her family and friends continued to pray. Then on November 4th, Joyce woke up and was safely taken off the ventilator. Cherry remembers talking to her friend via FaceTime that day. That was one of the most joyous moments for me of the whole thing, just actually being able to see her face and hear her voice and talk to her. She looked at me and she said, our lives are so intertwined. And at that was when I really knew she's gonna be okay. But we were just thankful that um, he was kind and generous to touch Joyce and give her back to us. Joyce was transferred to a regular room the next day and went home that weekend. 
that we had Thanksgiving here. And it was, it was really precious. Joyce is doing great these days. She knows firsthand the power of prayer. I am 100%. I am. I feel like I felt 20 years ago. God can restore. God is healed. And I believe that my desire is to make Jesus famous. Her outcome is amazing. I did not think she would live. I did not think she would make it. Then I didn't think she would survive the surgery. Then I didn't think she'd survive the physiologic insult to the intestine. Then I didn't think she'd survive the aftercare needed. And she, against all odds, did all those things and more. The importance of prayer was demonstrated to me in a very visual way. You can read about it, but when you live it, that's when things really stick.